that came up that we're going to try to address in this session is reporting on time on cases, and specifically on time on cases that occurred during a range of dates. And this will be an example of using the aggregate feature in reporting, which is somewhat of an advanced feature. It takes a little bit to get used to. This is a relatively simple example of using aggregate. In general, aggregates is a way to, you can think of it as a way to collapse rows in a report. So your report is doing what you need, but you're getting too much detail. And you want to, for example, collapse a report of cases time slips on cases so that it only shows one row per case, but totals up the time for those cases and so forth. There's other things you can do with it, but this is a fairly simple example. So to start with, in terms of time on cases, there is a field uh, in reports, it's a simple field on the top level case data table, which will give you all of the time on a case. So for example, we have a example report here, if I open it up, if all you need is the total time on case, certain cases, then you can run a report, use that field, and it will give you that information. So I can see in our test database here, you know, I have a case that has 3.33 hours, another one that has three, and so forth. And if you notice uh, down the left-hand side, I'll just sort this column really quickly, this is a one row per case report, so you're not getting multiple cases on the, uh, the report, because that's just the total time per case is just a magic field that sums up all the time on the case. So this is fine if you, for example, need a report, you know, how much time did we spend on all of the cases we closed last year, or how much time did we spend, have we spent on all the cases that were opened last year, or something like that. So again, you just want the total time for the case. You don't care when that time was entered. So if the case has been open for four years, you're going to get you know, all four years' worth of time. But the requirement that we want to deal with here is that you need the amount of time spent during a period of time. So how much time did we spend last year on cases? So if a case has been open four years, we don't want all four years worth of time. We only want the time that was spent during last year. So there's a couple different ways to approach that, and that's what we'll talk about in this example. So we have a report on our test site, case matter time during a range of dates. And instead of just running that report, I'll go ahead and edit that report. And so we can see what this looks like. All right, so once I refresh the data, and if you can look down the data table. You can see that we have a couple of cases, or a case that's repeated twice. Uh, we have another case that's repeated twice. I think we have a couple of cases that are repeated three or four times here. The reason they're repeated is that this report is pulling in the time slip detail. So again, we're only looking to report on time spent during a certain range of dates, during a certain time period. So we've had to pull in the report detail. So let me go into add fields so we can see how this report has been structured. So as you can see down in method two, this is a report based on the top level case data table. And we started this report from the case data table because we are only interested in case time. So we don't have to want to have to deal with having to filter out time that's linked to you know, other types of records or is not linked to any kind of record which is what we would initially get by default if we started with a report based on the top-level timekeeping table. So case data just makes sure that we can only pull in time that's linked to cases. This report just has a couple of basic fields from the top-level case data table. So it's just pulling in the case number, and then by default, it's also pulling in the internal ID number for the case. If we look at the subtables, you can see we're pulling in the case disposition, so we may want to filter on that. We look at you know, open cases, closed cases, you know, both. And then we've also pulled in the timekeeping multiple rows per case table here. This is what's call it causing you know, multiple rows per case, or in other words, it's really now a one row per time slip report instead of a one row per case report. 
underneath timekeeping, we pulled in uh, just one subtable that has the caseworker's name on it. And then just to keep it simple, the example simple, we've just pulled in the date of service and the time spent fields. So if I close up Add Field, come back to the report, then let's talk about what we can do to make this to collapse some of these rows so we don't have all this detail. Uh, so if, you know, if you're just interested in the number, uh, then this report as it is may be sufficient. If I open up the filters on this report, you can see that we're filtering on date of service between 1114 to 123114. So we just selected the current year uh, date preset on the date of service filter. So that could be last month, previous month, whatever range of dates. When somebody runs this report, they could run it for any range of dates if they needed. But this is definitely not all of the time. So any one of these cases may have time that was entered in 2013, 2012, and so forth. Again, we're only pulling out the time that's been entered for 2014. So let's say that we don't want all of this detail. Uh, we don't want one row per time slip on this report. So how can we use aggregates to help us collapse these rows? So the first thing that we would start with is the time spent column. Open up the properties, and in the aggregates attribute for this column, if we drop down, we can see several different options here. And so we want to select sum. So we want this, as we collapse these rows, we want the time spent values to be added up so they show up as a total. So click on Apply Changes. Now before I uh, refresh the data, see if we can get the refresh box out of the way. So I can't pull it out of the way right now. But notice again that you know we have uh, several different cases that have multiple you know, rows on them, multiple time slips. So let me go ahead and reload the data. And you may notice that we've collapsed this report just a little bit. The, the row count has gone down a little. But it's not one row per case here. So why isn't it? And that's because the aggregate feature, the sum, is saying you know, collapse a row if you can and then add up those values. But it, it can only do that if there are no unique values across the two different rows, or the third, fourth, and fifth row, and so forth. So if we look at this first case here, we can see there's a data service of 525 and data service of 710. So the aggregate sum on time spent can't collapse those two rows because there are two unique values there. And you'll have the same thing going down you know, the list like that. So to deal with that, we need to also aggregate the data service column. Now the aggregate that will be available will depend on the type of field that you're aggregating. So data service is not a numeric field, so we don't have an aggregate for sum. For most of your date fields, your two sensible choices are to use either the min or the max aggregate. All that simply means is to show either the minimum value if, if more, one or more rows are aggregated or show the maximum value. So if I close this up real briefly, you can see we have two values on this first case, May and, and July. So if I select max for the aggregate, it's going to show that July value. I'll click Apply Changes, and we'll again watch the row count. So we're at 32 right now. And after we aggregate date of service, we're down to 25 rows. And as you can see on the first case there, that is now down to just one row per case. And it's showing the max value, which is the July 10th time slot. So depending on your report, if you think it might you know, make things clear or not clear, you may want to change your column heading here to add something in parentheses, you know, date of service, you know, uh, most recent date shown, earliest date shown, something like that. And I'll just go ahead and switch the aggregate to men, so you can see how that will then display that May date instead of the July date there. 
Right, so we've collapsed this report down quite a bit, but I do notice that we still have a case, for example, this 08-121 case is still showing up twice. And the reason it's showing up twice, even though we've aggregated on the time spent, and we've aggregated on the date of service, is because there's a time slip entered by legal server staff, and there's also a time slip that has no user associated with it, which is typically you would not see, but in this test database, things like that can happen. And this may be fine because maybe this is how we want the report to be. We want to show you know, time spent on case during a range of dates, but we also want it to be broken out by caseworker. Uh, so if there were three caseworkers entered time on the case, then we want to show that case, one row for the first caseworker, second row for the second one, third row for the third one, and so on. Now, if we're not interested in doing that breakdown, we could, of course, just delete this column, and then that would take care of things, and you know, we would be able to collapse it, everything down into one row per case. The other option that we could do, since caseworker is a text field, we could do text join. What this will let us do is still see the, all of the caseworkers that have entered time, but it will put them all into one cell. So I'll select text join, click on apply changes. And you can see what happens there. And if we look at the 121 case here, we can see staff legal server and there's a blank caseworker in there that we can't see. Uh, but what you can see what it's going to do is it's going to repeat the caseworker name for each one of these time slips. Uh, so you can see you know, Jeff Hogue repeats twice, legal server staff repeats three times because there's probably three time slips being collapsed uh, into our total values over here. So that, depending on the data set that you're working in, you know, that could get kind of messy. Uh, so uh, your other alternative here would be to do a max or a min. And you still have everything collapsed down, and you're down to 20 rows, so one, effectively one row per case. Doing a max or min on caseworker name could be a little bit misleading, so it's probably not a very good choice for uh, this particular report. But again, if you don't need the breakdown by caseworker, of course, you could obviously just delete the, that column completely, and you've got your report there. Now, also notice that we have case disposition showing over here. Case disposition, we didn't have to worry about aggregating because that's not going to be different for the same case for any of these records. You know, a case can only have one disposition at a time. So any of these cases could have 13 time slips, but the case is going to be either open or closed. Uh, so you, that's not going to keep the report from collapsing the rows. Likewise, on the case number. So we're not trying to collapse case numbers. We're just trying to get down to one row per case. The other thing that you always need to check, too, if you're aggregating a report, is in the hidden columns. Because then depending on the tables that you've added to a report, you may have some hidden ID uh, columns that have been added that you need to collapse down. What you might see in, like the, in this example is at times if you add the timekeeping subtable, it may pull in the database ID field for uh, the individual time slips. And we would see that in the hidden columns as timekeeping colon database ID. That field, that column, would keep the report from collapsing because every single uh, time slip has a unique ID number. So we would need to come in and just open the properties on that uh, ID column and then put an aggregate on it. So typically, you put min, max, you could even do a count for a hidden column like that. Now, one other variation of this report is this is showing time spent during a range of dates. And that may be fine. That may be exactly what you need. So you don't care if the case is open or closed now. Uh, or what exactly its case disposition is. You just want the time that was spent on those, on any case, if it was spent during that period, you want it to show up. Another variation on this is you want time spent during a time period, but only on cases that had a disposition of open 
during that period. So you want to add another factor in there. Now, as you may be familiar, getting uh, cases that had the disposition of open during some period, regardless of when they were open or when if they're now closed, use the case date open range column for that. So let me add that to this report. So I'll go into add fields, open up the subtables, and add the case open date range subtable. And then under that subtable, I'll grab the date open range field. Close up add fields. Refresh the data. And now you should be able to see that what happened to us is we went back to viewing 39 records instead of our collapsed 20 records. So 20, you know, one row per case. And the reason is because we added another column, and this will happen if you add other columns to the report. If the if the, that, the values in that column can differ across the two rows. So if a value could be different for a case or a couple of different rows, then it's going to expand uh, the rows and take away uh, you know, your aggregation. Date open range is kind of a special animal. You always have to aggregate it. And so I'm going to first, uh, we're going to hide date open range. Typically, you want to filter on it, but you don't want it displayed. And then we'll come into, I was going to come into the properties on the case of the date open range column and aggregate it there to make sure that it didn't you know, uh, take away from our aggregation. But I'm having trouble opening up the properties for this. But again, the point there I wanted to make is that you add, you know, you have a report, it's aggregated the way you want it. If you add any fields, then you may need to aggregate those. In the example we're looking at here, typically I could add fields from the case data table, or you know, fields that only apply to cases, and it would not, you know, unaggregate my report because that field wouldn't change. So if I added clients gender, for example. I wouldn't need to worry about aggregating that because that's not going to prevent the rows from collapsing because if there's five time slips on a case, on a case, gender is going to be the same for all five of those rows. But if I pulled in some other fields, then I would have to aggregate those. So let's pull in the another field from timekeeping. And let's grab one that's probably going to be different. So let's pull in the activity code. That may be different for different time slips on a case. And it is. So it took our report from 20 rows to 27. And so again, our options here, since this is a text field, uh, we could do text join, uh, we could do a min, or we could do a max. Text join could be result in a lot of information in one cell, but not too bad for this particular report. And if we added another field pulled in from timekeeping that's different across time slips, you know, we're going to have to aggregate that as well. So hopefully this simple example of using aggregates on reports uh, is helpful to people. There are a lot of other instances where aggregates can be helpful. It's generally like this type of report where you have a one-to-many relationship. Uh, one case can have multiple time slips. You might also get into it you know, pulling case notes or something like that as well.